Sorry about that. I noticed it got cut short. But welcome back to another episode of The Struggle. How are you all doing today? So, um, may the Sith be with you. Uh, yes, this is May the 5th, a.k.a. Sith Day. I am a nerd. If you guys have not noticed, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Not so much of this new trilogy. However, I do like The Mandalorian. Yeah, I do like Obi-Wan. So, yeah, maybe I'll probably talk about those and in uh in another uh another episode but um yeah so um while i'm talking about star wars if you guys haven't heard let me see if i can find this book um it's on it's on my uh uh it's on my audible i'm li- i like I'm, i think i just i finished it a couple weeks ago um let me see at God's speed. As a matter of fact, why don't I check Amazon? No, I'm not being paid by them. Uh, I'm not being paid by the writer or nothing. Um, you know, I just I just like to learn. So uh, just give me one second as I try to find that. Let me see at crap. Where? How come I can't? Matter of fact, why don't I do this? Check my phone. Uh, where's my audible? Yeah, because I, I listen to, to audiobooks when I'm doing cardio. I uh, listen to audiobooks when I'm on, well, when I was going into the office. Uh, let me see. Reaching God's Peace. So that's the name of the book. Okay. Sorry about that. You know, I got studio cats that have been getting into trouble and all that other stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, as, as I'm trying to do the, as I'm trying to do good, that's when they want to start acting up, you know. Okay, I think this is the book right here. Go ahead and show that to you guys. Uh, share screen. Yeah, so even though I don't have, uh, I'm working on getting a, a a amazon store um trying to get all that stuff for you guys so that way you guys know exactly what i read and stuff like that books that i'm that i'm reading because most of my books i get off of amazon so um i do listen to audible which is affiliated with amazon but i've been reading this book or listening to it this book has really like blown my mind on a lot of stuff reaching god's speed unlocking the secrets broadcasting revealing everything uh the mysteries of everything this is by joe kovac and give this guy a good follow right there boom there you go oh crap no i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna let you guys see my login what's wrong with you but yeah so this is a really good book um it it talks about it, it really takes it takes things that are in uh, popular culture, music, TV, well, not so much TV shows, but music, um, TV shows, movies, stuff like that. It takes certain themes out of them that you may never suspect while wow, these artists and actors and writers and creators may not be devout followers of Judeo-Christian values, but there are messages in there that parallel a lot of the teachings in um, in uh, in in the Bible. So I remember they the guy um, every, like that the the song by Aha Take on Me. Yeah, that that was in there. Some songs by Bon Jovi and all types of other stuff. It you know it, it's 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 good it's a really good book it, you'd be re- it, even like a Madonna's like a virgin you know uh, things like that that most people will say is blasphemous but you know it goes against God and all this other stuff still have uh, correlations with the Bible especially biblical teaching so th- I really enjoy this book because it just kind of made me see God everywhere. You know, even in things that you may not be expecting. So a lot of people will sit here and say, well, Christians can't consume this sort of media, can't consume that. I remember growing up and I, you know, and I grew up in uh, Baptist churches and stuff like that, even though my family wasn't very devout. We didn't really go to church like that. Um, but I remember that some of the kids that I went to school with 
Um, Harry Potter was very big. Pokemon, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh was very big when I was growing up. That's the start of my nerd. You know, I, and I still enjoy those things even as an adult. Um, I have a different appreciation for them now. Um, but they were saying, uh, I remember growing up because I used to go to this youth group called YAP, or I forgot that what the acronym was. But it was a youth group on Friday nights, and we would get together, we would shoot pool, play games, just have good teenage fellowship and stuff like that. Then we'll get into a biblical teaching uh, towards the middle or the end of of the uh, event. And it was every Friday, which I thought was a good thing. But um, unfortunately, some of the youth pastors or the youth leaders were weird. Um, which was which contributed to a lot of my reasons why I stopped being a believer and uh, stuff like that. But that that's more so shame on me than shame on them. But um, but I remember growing up, I we had this one big giant blowout. They wanted us to bring all of our CDs. And, you know, I had CDs for days. I, you know, I had Eminem CDs, Nelly CDs, Ludacris, Busta Rhymes. I had all those stuff. So I remember they, they told us to come in with our music. So we come in. I had like a book. And this is when, you know, CD players were like, cool. You know, I'm showing my age. But, you know, you wore baggy pants so that way you could fit the CD player inside your pockets. Um, yeah. And then, uh. It, it, you always had like, you know, I went to school with a big giant book of CDs and stuff like that and just riding the train and stuff to and from school every day. Um, you know, you get you finish one CD, you pop another one in there. This is like before iPods and stuff like that. And um, and so I brought in my 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 CD collection. And then I remember one of the youth pastors or the youth leaders, he went in there and he started throwing my CDs in the trash. And I was like, yo, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and I got all up in arms, you know, rightfully so, but wrongfully so. I understand now as an adult what he was trying to tell me. He was like, look, these things are ungodly, yada, yada, yada. These are the least of sin, which they're like, yeah, they probably did. But at the same time, I'm like, yo, don't touch my stuff, man. I worked hard cutting grass to get these CDs. Don't touch my stuff. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> But now that I'm reading um, works like from Joe, Joe Kovac about um, light, reaching God speed, now everything that I listen to, I find some sort of biblical reference in it somewhere, or I can find biblical teachings. You know, back to my childhood, you, uh, Harry Potter was very big. And I remember growing up, a lot of my friends who were come from very devout home, uh, homes, which a lot of them, aren't even devout today, or they done went out there and whore their lives away. You know, some of the girls that were like, oh my God, I was wearing, they was wearing skirts and stuff like that. Mm -mm, I'm going to be a virgin till, I, till my husband comes. A lot of them got two or three kids now. Yeah, them people. Yeah, a lot of them come off as weird because they have no social skills and stuff like that, you know. I, I'm all for protecting your kids, but at the same time, don't handicap your kids. You know, teach them about the world instead of shielding them from it. And that's one of the lessons that I got. But a lot of those kids, they grew up, you couldn't read Harry Potter. You know, Harry Potter was a sin because of witchcraft. Okay, got it. The theme was witchcraft and all this other stuff. But at the same time, who cares? Like, there was a lot of Christian themes, a lot of biblical themes in Harry Potter you know, my wife and I were Harry Potter nerds and stuff like that. Now, I don't advocate for witchcraft. I don't advocate for none of this stuff. But at the same time, the stuff ain't real, people. I mean, hell, come on now. Like, I get it. You know, teach your kids how to discern certain things. If you if you lead them, you know, in a, if you teach, if you raise them in a biblical household and you teach them about the world, but teach them how not to be of the world, their level of discernment will be so much be so much higher and the learning curve when they go out on their own will not be as bad, you know? So, uh, and, and, and I like, you know, books like this reaching God's speed, because that's literally what the whole book is about. It's about going through things in popular culture and ripping out biblical, uh, teachings and biblical meanings from them. And, you know, my, my friend and mentor, Alfonso Rachel, uh, go to his go to his channel. Uh, go to his website, Braun Serpent Media. You guys can go to his YouTube. I'll link some of uh, some of his work in the description uh, 
I, if I can get a chance to. Um, yeah, because uh, he's been doing covers of a lot of songs that aren't even biblical, but he's been doing, but he's been trying to um, take some of the biblical meanings out of them. You know, even I, I highly doubt he's even read this book, but um, yeah, he's been doing covers for a lot of things as, you know, he's a musician and all this other stuff. So, yeah. So let me go ahead and and go ahead and do that. But yeah, that that's just one of the spiels that I wanted to get into. Uh, that's one of the books that I'm wrapping up right now on top of reading other books, as you guys know. Um, but yeah, I enjoy reading that book. If you guys ever get a chance to read that book, uh, if I can ever get the Amazon storefront or figure out how to work it, get that set up, I would definitely put this book in there. Um, it's it's a really good book, it, whether you want to listen to it or read it. It's really good. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get into today's study. So let me go ahead and blow the screen up. Oh crap! Let me let me go ahead and take away my logo. Boom! Let's blow this up so that way we can get into today's episode. So today we um you know as I say all the time, I don't care what Bible you use, whether you use the NKJV, the KJV, NIV, ESV, whatever. I'm used for this purpose of this Bible study. I'm using one of my favorite uh, versions, which is the TLV, the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version. That's what the TLV stands for. Um, I, I, yeah, I really don't care. You know, you guys can use whatever you want as long as you can read it. So, um, why is this up there? All right, so let's go into it. Chapter four: Sacrifices for Unintentional Sins. It starts. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, "Speak." To B'nai Israel, which is sons of Israel, saying, if anyone sins unintentionally in any of Adonai's mitzvahs that are not to be done and commits any one of them, sorry, try to, you know, I got dyslexia, uh, or if the anointed Cohen sins so as to bring guilt on the people, then let him offer for his sins which he has committed a young bull without blemish to Adonai for his sin, for a sin offering. He is to bring the bull to the entrance of the tent of meeting before Adonai lay his hands on the head of the bull and slaughter it before Adonai. The anointed Cohen should take some of the blood of the bull and bring it to the tent of meeting. The Cohen is to dip his fingers or dip his finger in the blood, sprinkle it seven times before Adonai. Remember, seven is the number of perfection, of completeness. Uh, where was I? The Cohen is dip his fingers, yada, 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 before Adonai, before the curtain of the sanctuary. Then the Cohen should put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of a sweet incense before Adonai, which is in the tent of meeting. He is to pour out all of the rest of the blood of the bull at the base of the altar of burnt offerings, which is at the entrance of the tent of meeting. He is to take all the fat of the bull and the sin offering of it, the fat that covers the innards, all the fat that is on the entrails, the two kidneys, and the fat that is over them, which is uh, which is by the loins, and cover it uh, and the cover of the liver, which he is to remove with the kidneys, just as it is removed from the bull of the sacrifice of fellowship offering. The Kohen should burn them, uh, burn them up as a smoke. Uh, as smoke on the altar of uh, okay i think uh, i think i supersized the the text there let me see uh did i supersize cuz i got the original right here i don't know why that got blown up i really got messed up messed with okay uh where was i the bull, uh, two kidneys, remove the bull or the sacrifice offering. The Cohen should burn them up as smoke on the altar, burnt offering. The bulls hide all its flesh with its head, along with its legs, its innards, and its dung. The entire bull he is to carry outside the camp to a clean place where the fat ashes are poured out and burn it over wood in the fire. It is to be burned on top of the place of pouring fat ashes. Yeah, I don't know why that that just got blown up so badly. Okay, I guess. Huh. 
I guess, uh, what is it called? Um, the program I'm using does something to my, uh, my stuff. So now if the whole congregation of Israel sins, but the deed is hidden from the eyes of the community, yet they have done one of Adonai's mitzvahs that are not to be done, then they are guilty. When the sin that, the, that they committed becomes known, then the community is to offer a young bull for a sin offering and bring it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the congregation are to lay their hands on the head of the bull before Adonai, and the bull is to be slaughtered before Adonai. The anointed Kohen should bring some of the blood from the bull uh, to the tent of meeting. Then the Kohen is to dip his finger in the blood, sprinkle it seven times before Adonai, before the curtain. He is to put some of the blood on the horns on the al- uh, of the altar that is before Adonai. Then the tent of meeting and the rest of the blood he is to pour out at the base of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the entrance of the tent of meeting. He is to take all the fat from it, burn it up as a smoke on the altar. He is also to do with the bull just as he did with the bull of the sin offering. He must do the same with it. So the Kohen shall make atonement for them and they will be forgiven. Then he is to carry the bull outside of the camp, burn it as he, as he burned the first bull. It is a sin offering for the community. And as we later learn, all of Israel and Judah ends up sinning. So um, when a ruler sins, the unwittingly uh, and unwillingly, unwittingly does one of the mitzvahs of Adonai, his God, uh, Adonai, his God, that are not to be done, then he is guilty. When he sins, uh, when his sin that he committed is made known to him, he is to bring as an offering a goat, a male without blemish. He is to lay his hands on the head of the goat and slaughter it in the place where they slaughter the burnt offering before Adonai. It is a sin offering. The Kohen should take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns on the altar of burnt offering. He is to pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering. He is to burn it all, its fat, on the altar, just as the fat of the sacrifice of fellowship offering. So the Kohen shall make atonement for him concerning all sins. I mean, concerning his sins when he is forgiven. So interesting here, right now, there are no rulers in Israel. The only thing that they have is the prophet, which is Moses, the, 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 uh, what is it? Cohen Gadol, um, or the Cohen, which is Aaron, the Kohenim, which are his sons and the Levites. And then you have all the tribal elders of the 12 tribes of Israel. There are no rulers. So even here, God is already projecting into the future that there will be a ruler. So when any one of of the common people sins unwittingly by doing one of of Adonai's mitzvahs that are not to be done, he is guilty. When his sin sin, uh, that he committed is made known to him, then he is to bring for for his offering a goat a female without blemish. So you see here, a ruler is supposed to bring a male goat. The common person is supposed to bring a female goat. So, and I'm I'm going to, I'm going to preface this right here because a lot of people want to sit here and say, you know, that this also points to the hierarchy. God, the Messiah, man, woman, child. You know, a lot of people have this issue with hierarchy but hierarchy doesn't really mean any any less importance, any less value, because what is a king without a people? What is a people without really a king or someone to, you know, or God, honestly, so uh, or a leader? So it, as we're seeing here, uh, a ruler is supposed to bring a male goat, but the common person is to bring a female goat. It, to me personally... I mean, they they both weigh a very heavy cost. I mean, because if you if you if if you slaughter a male goat, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use goats because we're talking about goats right now. If you slaughter a male goat, male uh, male species of any kind, the proclivity is to reproduce. 
So if you slaughter a male goat, you're slaughtering, you're cutting off lineage right there. You can you can't really produce any more male goats. But now if you slaughter a female goat, same thing, you're cutting off lineage because you need a female to to procreate with the male, but not only that, you're cutting off milk. You're cutting, you know, all the others because female goats produce milk. So yeah, I'm just just kind of just wanted to go there. All right, uh where were we? Uh, bring offering and guilt, a female without blemish, uh, for his sin that he committed. He is to lay his hand on the head of this of the sin offering, and then slaughter it in the place of burnt offering. The Kohen is to take some of the blood uh, with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering. Uh, he is to pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He is to take away all its fat, just. Like the fat is taken away from the from uh, taken away from off the sacrifice of fellowship offering, and the Cohen should burn it on the altar for a soothing aroma to Adonai. So the Cohen is to make an atonement for him, and he will be forgiven. See, and the reason why they're using he, because he, anytime we use masculine pronouns, masculine pronouns automatically default to female pronouns because as as I stated here, hierarchy. Man is the head of his household. So if we're sitting here, so let, let's go ahead and, and backtrack. So any one of the common people, that means male and female, sins unwittingly by doing one of Adonai's mitzvahs, which is not to be done, then he is guilty. So remember, we got people and then we got he. People is plural, then we got he. So let's just say your wife back, you know, if we're still under this um, this law right now. So let's just say if my wife sins, I still have to go out and I have to make the offering on behalf of my wife because if my wife sins, I sin. This goes back to Adam and Eve. Even though Eve sinned, Adam is still the head of his household. Sin did not come through Eve. It came through Adam. So if your wife sins, you sin. So I'm just letting that, you know. Go ahead and, and so now we're getting into the sin offering. So now, uh, now if he brings a lamb as a sacrifice for a sin offering, this means a young goat, uh, he is to, uh, he is to bring a female without blemish. He is to lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it at the place where they slaughter the burnt offering. The Cohen should take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns at the altar of burnt offering. Then all the rest of the blood, all the rest of its blood, he pours out on the base of the altar. He must remove all its fat, just as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of fellowship offering. Then the Kohen is to burn it up, uh, burn them on the altar on Adonai's offering by fire. So the Kohen shall make atonement for him over the sin that he committed and he will be forgiven. So now we're moving on to chapter five. If a soul sins after hearing the charge of an oath, he is a witness, whether he has seen or otherwise known, if he fails to report it, then he will bear his guilt. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think you get any more straightforward than that. Or if a person touches any unclean thing, whether it is the carcass of an unclean animal or the carcass of an unclean livestock or the carcass of an unclean creeping thing, though it is hidden from him, he is unclean. He will be guilty. Or if he touches some human uncleanness, whether his filth uh, is by which he is unclean Though it is hidden from him, uh, when he knows of it, then he will be guilty. Or if he swears rashly with his lips to do evil or to do good about anything that might utter rashly by an oath, though it is hidden from him, when he realizes it, he will be guilty of one of these. So it will be when one becomes guilty of one of these things, he should confess about what he has sinned. Then he is to bring a trespass offering to Adonai 
for his sins that he committed. A female from the flock, a lamb or a goat as a sin offering. So the Kohen is to make atonement for him over his sins. But if one cannot afford a lamb, then he should bring as his trespass offering for the sin he committed two turtle doves or two young pigeons to Adonai. One is for a sin offering and the other is uh, and the other for a burnt offering. He is to bring them to the Kohen who will present one for the sin offering first, twist its head from its neck, uh, but never, but not severe, but not sever it completely. He is to sprinkle some of its blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar, while the rest of the blood is to be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. He is to make the second a burnt offering according to the regulations. So the Cohen is to make atonement for one over his sins that he committed and he will be forgiven. But if one cannot afford two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he is to bring as his offering for his sin. He has committed a tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a sin offering. He is to put no oil on it, nor put any frankincense on it, for it is a sin offering. He is to bring it to the Kohen when the Kohen is to take his handful of it as a memorial portion and burn it up as smoke on the altar on Adonai's offering by fire. It is a sin offering. Then the Kohen is to make atonement for him over his sin that one has committed in any of these things, and he will be forgiven. The rest belongs to the Kohen, uh, just like the meal offering. Adonai spoke to Moses saying, if anyone commits a faithless act and sins unwittingly against the holy things of Adonai, then he is to bring his trespass offering to Adonai, a ram without blemish, which is a male, a ram without blemish from a flock, according to your value in silver shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary for the trespass offering, he is to make restitution for that which he has done wrong in regards to the holy thing and is regarded uh, and is required to add a fifth part of it and give it to the Cohen. So the Cohen will make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering and he will be forgiven. Now, if anyone sins and one of Adonai's commandments, which is the Ten Commandments, that are not to be done, though he did not know it, still he is guilty and will bear his iniquity. He is to bring to the Kohen a ram without blemish from the flock, according to your value, as a trespass offering. Then the Kohen is to make atonement for him over the sin that he committed unknowingly and he will be forgiven. It is a trespass offering. He is absolutely guilty before Adonai. The mitzvahs of restitution. Then Adonai spoke to Moses saying, suppose anyone sins and commits a faithless act against Adonai by dealing falsely with his neighbor in the matters of a dispute or a pledge of hands, like a handshake, through robbery or his extorted from or has extorted from his neighbor, or has found what was lost and lied about it, swearing falsely, so sinning in one of any of these things that a man may do, then he will be when uh, then it will be when he has sinned, he has become guilty. That sin must restore what he took by robbery or what he got by extortion or the deposit that has committed to him, or what was lost that he found, or anything which he sworn falsely. So he is, uh, so he is to restore it in full and add a fifth part more to it. So, so now what we have here is cancel culture. And the reason why I'm taking a pause right here is because there was something, you know, then it would be uh, he has sinned. Uh, he has become guilty, restore what he's took by robbery, extortion, deposit committed, lost or found, or anything that he has sworn falsely. So that we have a lot of cancel culture. And what cancel culture does is 
you, people make arbitrary rules and then they try to use these arbitrary rules to against people. So, and a lot of times people swear falsely on things. Um, I got into a, 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 a dispute in a, one of the groups that I'm in in Facebook. This guy decided to challenge me. I forgot what the topic was. And, um, and he wanted to, you know, he, he kept going on at me personally talking about, well, you're ignorant, you're this, you're that, read a book. And I read tons of books. Thank you. Um, you know, and I didn't swear at him or nothing like that. So then finally, um, he wanted to challenge, he wanted to say, um, something about, uh, I, he bet I wouldn't say what I had said to him in person. Okay, dude, you're a chump because now you're, you're, now you're trying to go to this. Oh, I bet you wouldn't trust me. I would. I'm not scared of anybody. The only thing that I'm scared of is God. That's it. I'm not scared of anybody. You may whoop my my ASS, but at the end of the day, trust me, I'm going to get mine. You may win, but you limping out. So I, I'm just going to say that. I ain't the baddest thing walking, but but, but dang it, you know, trust me, I, I can handle mine. So this dude went in trying to make all these things. And so finally, he he gives me this this uh hebrew israelite book about negroes and and all this other stuff and i said all right here we got another uh, another another uh negro israelite that thinks he's better than everybody with with misguided doctrine and he swear so finally i i i start ripping apart all his arguments he had nothing else to say so what he resorted to was trying to say that i was bullying him on facebook and of course, Facebook, you know, they hit you with those alerts and they said, this, this goes against our guidelines for bullying. And I said, how? Nothing that I said was bullying. Everything that I said was true. Everything that I said was not bullying. So this man swore falsely. So uh, for, I'm just using this. So what if like, I, you know, this channel. So what if someone comes on here, which uh, it's happened to, to, my friend Zoe, it's happened to a lot of people on YouTube, especially when you start talking about the Bible and you start talking about things that's true. You know, my wife doesn't like some of the things that I say, but it's true. So, like, she was like, babe, you need to stop making so many harsh comments about homosexuality and transgenderism. I mean, you can get in trouble for that. Okay, well, let's just say, I'm just going to use that. Let's just say someone wants to, if I was making, if I was one of those big giant YouTubers, I was making a lot of money from YouTube. And someone wanted to cancel me, which is highly likely. Now I'm losing money because they swore falsely. They try to say, well, he hates gays. He hates trans, yada, yada, yada. He thinks that trans people like kind of like Michael Knowles and, you know, all this other stuff. And, and, I, and, and so based on biblical law, if we because technically, technically, anytime a lawmaker swears their oath of office, they're swearing on the Bible. So they're swearing on this. I don't understand why this is not in, well, we have something like it, but let's just say if someone swore falsely against me according to these laws and it impacted me monetarily, guess what? I get back what I lost plus a fifth. So you got to also, it also has to impact you. If you swear against me falsely, it has to impact you. And I, and I honestly think this is why this is part of the reason of many reasons why our society is falling is because people can make false accusations that have a lot of impact on people, but a lot of these false accusations don't have any intrinsic backlash of like of real value. You know, you have a lot of these um, uh, case in point, the, the girl, the woman that got Emmett Till murdered, she lived the rest of her life. She just died, I think, last week or a couple days ago. She got to live the rest of her life. But in the eyes of God, technically, she should have paid. She, I mean, there's no way you can really restore a life. So she probably should have paid restitution for the value of that man's life or probably spent the rest of her life in prison. And especially the men that actually killed Emmett Till should have been dead. But. You know, or we have a lot of these these uh, false rape cases going on, you know, like the uh, the uh, I forgot the name of the school, like Mattress Girl and, you know, the lacrosse team, the college lacrosse team where a stripper or a prostitute, you know, said that they raped her and all this, all this other stuff, got the boys kicked out of college and all this other stuff. These people need to start paying restitution. We do have laws on them. 
But however, these laws aren't enacted. You know, I've seen a lot of men get in trouble with the law, um, especially with these girlfriend situationships, you know, where the girlfriend's mad, she starts hurting herself, she blames it on him because there's evidence of, of damages on her, you know, these men end up going to prison, but yet this woman walks free. And when they find out she lies, you know, sometimes they get a pat on the back or they may get some money in, but then nothing ever happens to the woman that lied. So anyway, let's go back. Um, he must give one of them, uh, he must give to one, uh, give to the one uh, to whom it belongs on the day of presenting his trespass offering. He is to bring his trespass offering to Adonai, a ram without blemish. So again, this goes back to hierarchy, a ram without blemish. So a ram without blemish from his, from his flock, according to your value of the trespass offering to the Kohen. The Kohen shall make atonement for him according to uh, a court, bleh, atonement for him before Adonai. He will be forgiven concerning whatever he may have done to become guilty. Now, a lot of these people keep people. I, I hear some people say, well, a ram, a goat, a dove, a bull. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, that doesn't mean anything. Well, yes, it does, because. Bulls are beasts of burdens, rams, you know, all these animals cost money. They have value, you know, rams, goats, lambs. These are potential food. So you are losing a meal because you want to sin around. You're losing doves, which, you know, you can use doves as either food or carrier pigeons or whatever else. These things have monetary value. And then sometimes these people didn't have them, so they had to go out and buy them. So now you're losing out on the value of your money because you want to sit around. So, yeah. So some of the footnotes that we got here, Leviticus 5, 6, then he is to bring the trespass offering to Adonai for his, uh, for his sin that he committed, a female from the flock, a lamb for, or goat as a sin offering. So the Kohen is to make atonement for him over his sin. This is paralleled with 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to the uh, to forgive to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And Leviticus uh, five eleven, where they talked about ephah, the ephah the is virtually two quarts. So that is our that is our lesson for today. Um, yeah, sorry about not really getting the episodes out. Trust me, I've been busy with getting uh, my son's room ready, um, painting, getting situated, getting furniture, getting all types of other stuff. And on top of that, work meetings and stuff like that. So we will, I'll, I'm, trust me, I'm going to try to figure out a way to kind of get these to you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, so a lot of these, a lot of these sacrifices that we talked about today, I think all of these point to, uh, point to the Messiah. We got bulls, like we said, bulls uh, point to uh, a lot of times in pagan cultures or even to the uh, to the early Hebrews. Bulls was a sign of power, authority, leadership, you know, stuff like that. Ram, uh, to me, Ram kind of goes back to Abraham, where he sacrificed when he was about to sacrifice his son Isaac, and then a ram, and then God provided him a ram. Ram also points to um, points to the Messiah. A female ram, a female goat, you know, lambs and all this other stuff, these things, especially without blemish, you know, these things without blemish to me means perfection. They're supposed to be perfect. I don't know what an unblemished ram or goat looks like. I don't know. Um, but I'm I'm not into uh what is it, husbandry where you raising goats and maybe, maybe one day when I get older. Um, but also doves, you know, doves as we as we look back in the New Testament. Um, where the spirit of God descends upon, descends upon the Messiah, uh, as a, like a dove. So all these things point to the Messiah to me. So again, I don't understand why Jews cannot see the Messiah in these things. Um, trust me, I, I have no quarrel with the Jews. Um, I just, it, it's just interesting to me. I think both, I think Jews and Christians are the left and right hands of, 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 what we need to, to move forward. But I just wish that Jews and Christians would kind of come together better 
to kind of learn from one another. Now you have this Messianic movement, um, you know, which I wouldn't even call it a denomination. I hate denominations. Because to, to me, if you're going to sit here and bow about denominations, you've already lost. I don't think it's a denomination. But I uh, one thing I do appreciate about the Messianic movement is it really, it really, um, it really speaks to the importance of the Hebrew heritage of the Bible because that's one thing. Because I grew up in Baptist churches, and we rarely read the Old Testament. We rarely under it wasn't taught um, the Hebrew culture, and a lot of people, you know. And to me, learning Hebrew now, it's definitely opened my eyes and opened my mind to a lot of things. And I'm trust me, I'm still a novice at it. I'm not great at it. I'm still learning. Uh, my my next attempt is going to be Greek. Um, but I think when you learn these cultures and you learn who these people are, you get a better understanding of what the Bible is actually saying. You know, it's kind of like when you read a book, you want to understand the the character, so they give you important information to help you understand who they are and their psyche and their inner thoughts and feelings and stuff like that. So that's what I think the the, the Messianic um, movement is, is supposed to do. And the Bible talks about mes the Messianic movement or the Messianic horn or stuff like that. Like these are, these are biblical things. Now there are some Messianic factions that I don't really care for. I honestly, um, but I, I think, you know, if it's in the Bible, do it, you know, uh, that's, that's my thing. Of course, there's some things we can't do. We can't do a lot of these offerings because we don't have Cohen's. We don't have um, we don't have a temple. So of course, a lot of things you can't do. Which all these things were absolved in in the Messiah anyway. Um, but even though the Messiah did a lot of these sacrifices, he did the the meal offerings. He did um, the 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 um, the festivals and stuff like that. So I think there's a lot that Jews miss. I think there's a lot that Christians miss. Um, but, you know, I think if, if I think the best thing to do is, is come at the Bible uh, with an open mind and read uh, the word for yourself. Because uh, interestingly enough, I get into the, a lot of these debates. I had this girl um, argue me about if you believe in Satan, then you believe in two gods. And I said, what are you? talking about no that's not that's not how any of this works and um so her and i got to this long lengthy debate and i, I just said and then she fine and i told her i said i don't care what you say because no matter what mental gymnastics you do even if you want to use the marvel marvel universe pantheon of of gods and and titans and whatever you're still going to get to the very end where there is one god that created himself and everything in it so and that's in marvel as well so and and, and i'm cool with some people that say you know i don't know if if it's really god that created the world or maybe god had, a, had created something else that created us fine you know, if you want to do that, read the Bible for yourself. But she, the interesting thing was she kept saying like, well, I believe that energy, energy can't be created nor destroyed. So energy to me is God. And I said, before we move on with this conversation, define God for me. So that way we both have an understanding. She said everything. And I said, so do you mean like everything, everything? Or do you mean like, like God is everything? And she says, no, everything is God. And I said, well, if everything is God, then everything can't be God. So everything is not God. Because if God is everything and God created everything, then everything that God created is not God. And like, and, and, and I'm just like, yo, like, come on, girl. And the interesting part was I was reading Ezekiel and they talked about uh, one of the kings and which to my mind, the king of Tyre, and they referenced the king of Tyre as a serpent that was in Eden as the one who wanted to, who wanted, who had a heart like God or wanted his heart to be like God. And when they said heart, it meant like he was God. And I, and I told her, I said, baby girl, like you're, you're exactly what I just read. And you, if you think everything is God, I hate to be around when God actually shows you who's God. 
and and it's interesting to me like it's unfortunate that we have a lot of those people in this world and they don't feel the cost of their sins yet so they keep they continue down this dangerous path and they keep they keep ensnaring themselves now if we had something like you know where you paid for your sins then you be more apt not to sin but As we see for the Jews, that didn't really pan out so well because they kept sinning. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Um, Yeah, uh, I'll see you guys next week. Um, I'll definitely get some videos done for you guys. Trust me, there's a lot going on that I want to talk about. So until then, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.